Phil Mickelson is on blast this week for his gambling habits. Billy Walters, one of the most famous, maybe the most famous sports gambler in history, has released a book, and it outlines all of Phil's gambling habits. Now, this is a tricky topic because I think you have a lot of people who don't gamble seeing big numbers, and they are freaking out. I, as you all know, have been in the gambling space for a long time, and especially sports gambling. I am hesitant to say that this is much of a big deal at all. And we're going to kind of really outline that. Now, there's there's a lot to this. It's a tricky topic, but I want you to think about this before we start the video. When people say it's a problem, what do they mean? I've always had a saying that no one has a gambling problem. People have losing problems. What I mean by that is that you never, ever hear someone say, Daniel Negreanu has a gambling problem. Phil Ivey has a gambling problem. Phil Ivey and Daniel Negreanu are two of the greatest poker players to ever live. Big time gamblers. Phil Ivey was recently part of a, a lawsuit where a European casino alleged he was counting cards or something. And it was like over $8 million or something. Like that. Anyways, if you averaged and said, yeah, Phil Ivey is in casinos for on average six hours a day, every day for the last 10 years. If you just saw that, you'd be like, oh my God, this guy's addicted. If you saw, yeah, Phil Ivey has wagered over, whatever, $500 million in his career. It's like, oh my God, this guy must have a problem. But then you look at it and say, oh, well, he's a professional poker player. He's a professional gambler. He's made millions and millions and millions of dollars of this. Okay, makes sense, right? So I would hesitate. I'm telling you, I would hesitate to say this is a problem. What we're going to see here, I think, is a bunch of people who do not gamble, Talk about gambling, which is a terrible combination. Games tonight, Rich. Oh, man, we taking the overs? What do you think? Preseason overs? He doesn't know what you're talking Excuse about, Excuse me. Chris. I know what he's talking about. Oh, and I have, I, what do we got, Rich? I have, I, sometimes I, you know and sometimes you don't. Here's what I've got to say on this. Easy there, Phil Mickelson. I read that Phil Easy. story this morning. Oh. I was like, I got to step my game up. Easy. I'm a lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Did you wind up betting on the Hall of Fame game? No. Good for yeah, you. I mean, wait, wait, tell me this Who? Phil Mickelson story. See, I bet on the Hall of Fame game. This is a good example. Why wouldn't you bet on it? Bet One, betting is legal. Remember. So, totally legal. How do you not bet on it? If you're going to watch it, make it fun at least. And preseason is arguably a better time to bet than the regular season because coaches will flat out tell you what they're going to do. They'll flat out say, we're going to arrest starters. The other coach will say, we're going to try and play our rookies and whatever. You can... It's much easier to bet. There's way more information. So that are, that already tells you everything you need to know about this crew. Story. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. What? Go, go for it. Uh, so there is a new, go book, for it, Chris. New, book, a new book coming out by one of the most famous sports gamblers, this guy named Billy Walters. Him and Phil became friends mm -hmm. uh, in the early 2010s. Um, and just the reports, he kept detailed records of him and Phil's relationships and the bets they would share together. And basically, Phil bet about a billion dollars worth in Whoa. five years uh, over the course of I, about I, a five-year period. Uh, over a thousand bets of one hundred and ten thousand to win a hundred thousand. All right, now here is here's a great example. Okay, now I've done the math. Phil Mickelson's net worth is supposed to be about nine hundred million dollars. Let's just for ease of math say it's eight hundred million. Okay, I believe a one a one hundred and ten thousand dollar bet or a one hundred thousand dollar bet is what like zero point. Zero one two five percent or something like that of eight hundred million. So if we bring it down even more, that's like someone who has ten thousand dollars betting a dollar twenty five, right? I hope this math checks out. I might have misplaced a zero. But when you have a guy who has that much money, a hundred thousand dollars is not that big of a deal. Especially if you consider how gambling works sometimes where You'll bet a hundred thousand. Like let's say he starts off with a million. He bets a hundred thousand. He wins. Now he has two hundred thousand. He bets it again. He loses. Back to a hundred thousand. Bets another one. Wins. You can do all that. And even though it's it's stacking up the the total amount of money he's gambling, he's really only gambled that one one hundred thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll we'll do it again. Let's say he has a hundred thousand dollars and he wins five bets in a row. Okay. 
So he's got 100,000, he's got 200,000, he's got 300,000, 400,000, 500,000. Let's say he bets at 500,000. You could say then he has wagered over a million dollars. But really, to him, he's only wagered at 100,000. See what I'm saying? So right there, the whatever you said, $1,000, $100,000 bets, when you look at it when, with how much money Phil has, that's not that much. He's betting a very small percentage of how much money he has. What is worse is when you see somebody who's living paycheck to paycheck and they're betting $500 on a football game. Because then they're betting, instead of Phil Mickelson, betting 0.00125% of their money. This person's betting like 80% of their money, 60% of their money. The people who are living paycheck to paycheck, but they're paying hundreds of dollars a month in lottery tickets is way bigger of a problem than Phil Mickelson. The person who is living paycheck to paycheck and has credit card bills all over the place, but they owe their bookie $2,000 is a wor- much worse spot than Phil Mickelson, who's betting $100,000 on a football game when he's got $800 million in the bank. So you have to take st- a step back. You have to take a step back and look at this. How- and what also surprises me is how many times have we seen Drake or Floyd Mayweather put their bets out there. Drake bet $250,000 on Nate Diaz against Jake Paul. No one said anything. That is just as bad, maybe even worse, than Phil Mickelson betting $100,000 on an NFL game. Like, this is, people are talking out of both sides of their mouth. Floyd Mayweather, how many times have we seen him say, oh, I bet $400,000 on the Super Bowl. And no one is sitting here saying that Floyd Mayweather has a gambling problem. No one is saying that he has an illness. Another 800 more of 220,000. Uh, reportedly, uh, this guy, Billy Walters, talked Phil out of uh, betting on himself in the Ryder Cup in mm. 2012, uh, a match which the Europeans won because, in famous fashion, called the Miracle at Medina, uh, partly because Phil lost his match on Sunday to Justin Rose. Uh, a 400K bet that he reportedly talked Phil out of. Mm. Um, yeah, Phil's a maniac. Wow. And uh, this is way more and way bigger than we thought of uh, the gambling issues that Phil had. That we- but see, like, all right, I'm, I'm getting agitated already because I've already outla- I've laid this out. If he's got $800 million, is he a maniac for betting $100,000? Someone do the math. Put it in the comments below because I, I, I did this earlier, but I might have, I might have messed it up. $100,000, what percentage of that is uh, $800 million? And then, then dumb it down. Dumb it down to $10,000. $10, Again, let's just make up numbers. If I had $10,000 and I told you I made a whole bunch of $25 bets, would you be like, man, this guy's got a serious issue? No. Just because you add zeros to something doesn't make it more of an issue or less of a zero or less of an issue. I, I just don't get, I don't get the, I don't get where they're, uh, how they're like, man, this guy's just such a maniac. This guy's out of control. That was detailed in the Alan Shipnup book. Well, and, 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 you know, three things. Number one, he's, he's got a sickness. No, no number question. one, number no, one. No, I, no I can't question. imagine. No he question. must live his life where he's got to have action on literally everything. Everything. Yeah. I mean, and I, and I can't a, imagine that yeah. it just goes away. Like suddenly you don't have to have action on everything. And well, we just saw him a video of him with Bryson DeChambeau about to play a, a practice w- round. practice round. Yeah, and what they say they put it, it, that was only like a thousand. That that wasn't even that much money. That that was. I think it was like ten thousand dollars. Maybe it might have even been a thousand dollars. Which again, not that not that much money. People gamble on golf all the time. I've played in golf games when I was like 22 years old. I was working, I was making a couple hundred dollars a week and we'd go bet 50 bucks on a, on a round of golf. That doesn't seem like that much money, but $50 is a whole hell of a lot when you have $0 in your bank account or when you have $200 in your bank account and you're betting 25% of your bank account on a random golf game with your friends. I don't, I don't know. I mean, and, and there is there is a chance that I have 
rose colored glasses or whatever this whole situation because i'm so in tune with gambling and sports gambling and stuff like that where i just don't think this is that big of a deal now do not get this twisted i am not saying that gambling addiction doesn't exist i'm not saying that but i'm saying that if you're going to say all this about phil mickelson then we're going to have to say all this about the floyd mayweathers the drakes the whoever is putting their their money out there. You're going to have to say this about every guy in America who's betting $100 on a football game with $1,000 in their bank account. You're going to have to say this. How many people play DraftKings and do DraftKings every day and they put three, four, five dollars on, on something when they have $200 in their account? How many people are buying lottery tickets? Like, do or, do all of these people have sicknesses? Do all of these people who are doing this, do they have a problem? You could probably say, yeah, there is something bad going on there. I don't think it's fair that Phil Mickelson is getting this when just because it's large numbers and because it's it's like startling to see the number, even though when you really kind of think about it, it's no different than... It, it actually might be less than what we would consider normal gambling. Whole practice round at the recent live event... Phil's talking about betting one, two thousand on the just, practice round. So, so yeah, that's, that's nothing. number one. Yeah, that's nothing. Number two is what? Is, I mean, I'm just going to keep saying the same stuff over and over here. But what's two thousand dollars to Phil Mickelson? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. What? What is worse, Phil Mickelson betting two thousand dollars on a round of golf, or Drake betting two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on Nate Diaz boxing Jake Paul? I don't even think it's close. Phil Mickelson, Phil Mickelson, it's like the hardest word to say. Phil Mickelson is a professional golfer. Him betting on himself for $2,000 versus Drake betting $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars on a random fight between Jake Paul and Nate Diaz. It ain't close, ladies and gentlemen. So why is Rich Eisen not talking about Drake's gambling problem? What about Drake's illness? Maybe he had to go to the Live Tour. Did the did the Live Tour get him whole? Uh, I mean, that's been the speculation. I mean, is the that what time. it is? Did the Saudis basically get him out of debt, gambling debt? Who knows? We will never know. Yeah. And I don't know number about three that. is I asked the thief among us, figuratively, to see if this is dishonor amongst thieves writing about this stuff. Well, oh, yeah. uh, Billy Walters has oh, yeah. a little bit of beef with Phil. Yeah, Walters and Phil. Phil turned his back on Walters when Walters was in a, a pinch for insider trading. Uh, so Walters doesn't like Phil, Phil Mickelson. So you could also ask yourself, like, how much of this is true? How much of this is whatever? How much of this is is Walters just going after Phil after, you know, Phil screwed him? Like, yeah, you know, I, mean, I don't know. Uh, this Clearly. Guy, well, this guy went to prison for five years for yeah. the insider trading thing a while back. And he claims that Phil could have avoided his prison sentence by merely, quote, telling the truth. And so by not doing that, he's now telling the truth about Phil in a book. Go correct, buy his correct, book. Correct. Talking about how yeah. Phil just Among has to have things, action on everything. Just And also his life, he's in his 70s, his life and as a sports gambler and a famous sports gambler. And, you know, there's a chapter or two about Phil and their relationship. That's sick, man. And I'm not saying sick like in the 21st century way of saying that's wild. No, it's ill. That's an illness. Mm -hmm. I said this it's all the time, addiction. man. I said this all the time. If screw it, I'll just conflate the two, which it might be doing so by saying the word conflate. If Pete Rose had ever come out and done what Mickey Mantle did at the end of his life about alcoholism and parenting and saying, I was a bad parent because I was an alcoholic and I am dying and don't be like me and went on a tour you know, of Oprah and whatever, mm -hmm. and basically was open about, this is what happened to me. Don't be like me. I think he, if Pete Rose had ever done that about gambling, he'd be in the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown, New York right now. A million percent. If he came out and said, I had a gambling sickness, you damn right, I bet, on the Reds. That's why I signed that document. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't get it. Like, the 
the the jump to a sickness or an addiction or that that is what's my big problem with this should someone bet a lot on games i mean i'm not here to say that's right or wrong it's legal you know i mean I, it, it depends on the situation but to say it's a sickness it's a disease it's an like that's such a huge jump I saw one of the bullet points was that Phil Phil bet is like forty eight bets on one day of Major League Baseball. That's really not that much. If you just bet the let's take the NFL. If you just bet, you pick the winner of every game. That sixteen that's sixteen bets. Then let's say you do the over under of every game. So you're doing every the winner of every game, the over under of every game. You can do the math. It's thirty two. There's thirty two bets right there. Then you do a prop bet. Okay, so you bet, like, will this receiver have over blank amount of yards on every game? That's 16 more, right? So now we're up to 48. It's really not that hard to have a ton of action on a ton of games, especially like Major League Baseball. You can bet on will the will there be a run score in the first inning? You can bet on which team will score first. So you don't even have to make outlandish bets to get to 48 bets in, in a day. Again, I'm not saying you should, but let's just pretend that Phil bet $100,000 on uh, every one of those games. If you go to his net worth and you trickle it down and it's like, yeah, Phil bet uh, a grand total or whatever percentage of his net worth in one day. It's like, eh, I mean, that's not, that's, that's pretty comparable to big gamblers. Was Phil a big time gambler? Yes, obviously. Was he a whale, as we say in the industry? Yes, obviously. But I'll tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, there are people who go and spend quarter of a million, half a million, a million playing video poker. And they ain't Phil Mickelson. They don't have eight hundred million dollars. I know people personally who bet eighty, ninety, seventy percent of their bank account, their net worth every single Sunday in the NFL season. I know people personally who are indebted five, ten thousand dollars to bookies. Maybe more. Who have whose bank account has never seen five thousand dollars. I know people who pay bookies like other people pay Best Buy credit cards. A thousand dollars every month. Boom, 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 boom. Do they have an illness? I don't know. I don't know. When I, I think when you have an illness, as far as gambling, is whenever you are robbing Peter to pay Paul, when you're gambling, when you're way out of your means, when you're embezzling to pay, when it becomes something like that, when you're doing that, I think you can, I think you can have a conversation of like, what's the problem? And, and another thing too with gambling, it's hard because... A lot of the times, what get pe- what gets people in trouble is that they're tr- they're constantly trying to get even. They're not addicted to gambling; they're trying to get themselves out of a hole. And that's to me two very separate things. Because they may they may want to stop, but it's like I can't stop because I can't pay my bookie, so I have to keep going to try and get even. It's obviously a fool's errand, but are they addicted to gambling or are they scared for their life and they're trying to pay the bookie back? There's way too many variables with this kind of stuff to just flat out look at his numbers and say, that's an illness right there. That's a sickness right there. And I would like back in, and my way of being back in is this is a sickness. Gambling is a sickness. Do not be like me. I had the money. I ended up losing it. Obviously, Phil has money. We think. We think. But this is a sickness. I view this, and I'm not like, that's wild, man. Oh gosh, Phil's a character. No, I'm I'm thinking he's he's got an illness. Shoot you straight. Straight up. That's the way I view it. And I understand I'm I'm not a gambler. So by trade prof- and, and, and and by profession I can't be one. You know, so I like having a little action. No, I, I hear you. Nine figure I'm losses. Just, is just I'm I'm fine with smokes. I'm fine with That's the fantasy it. football and my, uh, with my, my buddy. But why? You know, like how is that different? Like on the base level, it's the exact same thing. The lottery is the same as playing blackjack. 
Fantasy football is the same as betting on a prop. It's all the exact same. Should someone with paycheck to paycheck, should they be in a $100 fantasy football league? Is that an illness? Is that a sickness? I don't know. I mean, when you break it down like that, I I, I don't know, man. I, I just think, like, what what makes it, I, I, don't, I guess I just don't understand, like, what makes it a sickness? It is a legal thing to do. It'd be like drinking. It would be like saying that if you go home and drink every night, have a drink, you know, let's say you go home every single night after work and you have two, three beers. Are you an alcoholic? I don't know. It's different for different people. You know, it, I have no idea. The role, like I, I equate Phil Mickelson's gambling situation to when you hear stories of like Motley Crue or the Rolling Stones partying. Were they alcoholics and drug addicts? Or were they just in a situation where they were just on the road partying every night and that was it? I, I don't know if they were truly addicts or if they were just doing whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, who knows if what person... I, I'm, I'm just going to randomly name people. Like, did Slash ever go to rehab? I don't know. But, did, but at some point, I'm sure you could look at his total number of alcohol during a week or total number of drugs during a week and say, holy God, this guy has a sickness. And and the drug part is illegal. Gambling is legal. It's just a huge jump to just throw that out there. He's being the, being the extra yeah, I, action, if the, yeah, if you will. Play like, little uh, cards here and there, but like, yeah. good God. He bet, he, once, there was a report that so he So you're had, betting $220,000 to so, just win $20,000 less than what you put on the table. That's how sure of a thing it is? Is that is that the way? Yeah, I mean, there's, he there's some about? things out there. He famously bet uh, 20K on the Ravens to win the 2000 Super Bowl at 20. Yeah, he won like $300,000. That's a very famous story. He won like three hundred grand because I remember the story is in Vegas that when he went and collected, they threw like a party for him, all that stuff, and he didn't tip anybody. 28 to 1, uh, you know. He bet uh, one day. He bet forty three different baseball games. What? He bet a million dollars in a day on baseball. Essentially, <laughs> that, I'm telling you, that's not that much, uh, guys. I, I know it sounds crazy, but for Phil Mickelson, that is not that much. I have had, I have had over a thousand dollars wager on one game, while simultaneously I have had. Less than a thousand dollars in my bank account. Do I have a problem? Did I have a problem? No, I don't gamble every day. I I could quit tomorrow. Like, it's not a big deal. Phil is betting like less than five percent of his role. If a million dollar, if he's betting a million dollars in baseball, he's betting a very small fraction. Let's just say he has ten million dollars. Let's let's bring it all the way to ten million. If he's got ten million dollars and he's betting one million dollars, that is an incredibly tiny percentage of of action. He could be doing way worse, dude. Hmm. Yeah, people do. That's what I'm saying. People do do way worse. It makes me. This makes me sick. Listening to these two clowns. Talk about this. It, I, I mean, I know if you do not gamble, this is a hard thing to kind of quantify. But again, someone who has $1,000 going into the casino and playing the slot machines for 50 bucks a day is exponentially worse than Phil betting a million dollars a day on baseball. Hundred percent. I saw a game the other night in um, in Anaheim where it was all buttoned up, and then the six run ninth happens. I mean, yeah, I mean that drives game. Last crazy. night, hold on a second. Yeah, I mean, it is what last it is. night in baseball, we saw Michael Lorenzen pitch a no hitter in his first game as a Philly. Yep. Yeah. And we saw baseball land in the light of the Green Monster. Yeah, that was amazing. So anything can happen. Oh yeah, that's that's what makes it fun. Almost in any sport. Yes, it is. 
Yeah. I mean, so does that answer your question as to what that story is, <laughs> TJ? You're like, wait a minute, what story? I, my mind's That's the story. Bit. Don't you think? I mean, yeah. I can, well, whatever. Reportedly a $100 million loss to Phil. Well, maybe. <sighs> and so if, if there's a group of individuals that he clearly, as he stated publicly, he finds disreputable and they say, we will give you X amount of dollars, and then you look at your bank account over the span of all this time. I'm, I don't know if that put him in the red or not. We have no idea. We'll never. Highly successful guy who, by the way, if he wanted to, without all this craziness, the last, ever since he won the PGA. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I've, obviously, I've made my case here, and, you know, it is what it is. Disagree or not. You know, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Like, do you think. The story's kind of getting blown out of proportion. Do you think that Phil does have a sickness? Let me know in the comments below what you think. I will be reading and reacting to the comments. This is a very unique topic. It's a very heavy topic. Uh, we're talking about a lot of different things here. There's a lot of different examples, so I will be in the comments explaining. You know, if, if, you, if you're like, ah, well, what about this? Or this doesn't make any sense. Or I got a question about this. I will be in the comments to to kind of you know detail out some of those things. So please let me know in the comments below what you think. And I will see you in the next video.